Brad Keselowski will become the first full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver to also race full-time in the SRX. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Midweek edition of the show tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time on my friend The Iceberg's YouTube channel. I and several other NASCAR content creators will once again be live to premiere the sixth season of our weekly live podcast. So we'll be talking all things NASCAR, the clash, the off season, and everything in between. Be sure to tune in tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there. Before we get into all the latest news, I don't know about y'all, but growing up as the NASCAR kid, all my friends, extended family knew I loved NASCAR. I'd wear brightly colored black and yellow Matt Kenseth t-shirts to school. And as a result, you know, I'd hear every NASCAR cliche joke in the book. Oh, they just turned left. The infamous NASCAR birthday card. You guys know what I'm talking about. And of course the old classic, I think even the Pixar movie Cars made fun of this one. But the fact that in NASCAR, the headlights don't work. They're just the decorative stickers. Well, that joke has officially become outdated. It's been taken to its grave. NASCAR posted this clip this morning showing off working headlights on their Garage 56 Le Mans test car. Working headlights on a NASCAR stop car. I never thought I'd see the day. What's next? Pigs gonna start flying? I didn't think it was possible, but NASCAR making all of our wildest dreams and fantasies come true. <laughs> okay, aside from that, let's get to the real news. I thought this news was interesting. Interstate batteries will apparently increase their sponsor support of Joe Gibbs Racing this year and will spread their bright green paint scheme across all four of the team's cars. Look at this image JGR posted. Oh my gosh, copy paste, copy paste, copy. control V, control V. Last season, Interstate Battery sponsored Kyle Busch for six races. They will now sponsor Ty Gibbs for six. Also, Christopher Bell for five. And they'll sponsor one race each for Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. This is... This is a lot to handle. <laughs> I'm trying not to be melodramatic, but just look at all the green. I love this paint scheme. This is the best interstate battery scheme. I don't know, maybe some of the old Lobani schemes were, were better, a little more classic, a little vintage, but I love the literal electricity that comes off of these. But four of them, four of the exact same thing, they couldn't have tweaked it slightly for each driver to give them their own slightly unique identity. Interstate Batteries has done this before. I've seen them on Truex's car. I've seen them on Eric Jones' car. Matt Kenseth ran an Interstate Battery scheme once. And they never really change it. It's always just a copy paste of what we've always seen on Kyle Busch's car. Whatever, you know, the flagship car is running that year. So I'm not surprised. I just... You know, four of the same car. I know they're not all going to be on track in the same race, but still, it's a little confusing. I don't know, maybe that's just the NASCAR fan in me. I guess in Formula One, there are two you know, Red Bull cars on track that look almost exactly the same, and it doesn't seem to bother them. So, unlike in Formula One, where people are Ferrari fans, Mercedes fans, Red Bull fans, and NASCAR, like, yeah, there are some Hendrick fans, there are some Joe Gibbs Racing fans, but most NASCAR fans are, are fans of a particular driver or two that may not even drive the same manufacturer. So, I don't know how I feel about about just matching paint schemes. Uh, anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Just wanted to share that information. <laughs> the big news of the day comes from the Superstar Racing Experience. Today, the SRX revealed that Bobby Labonte and Ryan Newman will return to the series to race full time. And joining them for all six races this summer will be Haley Deegan and Brad Keselowski. They will be full-time SRX in addition to full-time NASCAR. Deegan, of course, is doing trucks. Keselowski is doing the full cup schedule. 38 races this year. He becomes the first active full-time cup series driver to run the full SRX schedule. That wasn't the only news out of the SRX today. They also revealed Denny Hamlin will run the season opener at Stafford. Not the full schedule, just one race, but they both join a very colorful list of NASCAR names who've already committed to at least a handful of SRX races. Kyle Busch will do two races this summer, Kevin Harvick will do two races, and Clint Boyer will do three. Keselowski, though, will do all six races. Here's what he had to say, quote, I've been watching the SRX series on TV over the years, and given our limited practice and qualifying time in motorsports now, this provides another outlet to gain track time and better my craft. 
Hmm, I'm not sure that's a shot at NASCAR, not bringing back practice and qualifying. There are many drivers who are happy that they're not at the track three, four days a week. But an interesting comment nonetheless, and I can't help but compare the SRX to NASCAR, especially now that the SRX is basically becoming NASCAR light. Keselowski, Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Harvick, so many active NASCAR Cup Series stars have committed to run at least a handful of SRX races this season. I'm beginning to question the SRX's identity. Is this their new identity? They no longer want to be seen as the old guy racing series for mostly recently retired drivers? Is this their big push to truly become the new IROC, the new international race of champions? I'd say so, except IROC had drivers of all sorts of different disciplines and backgrounds and from different series. Talking about the SRX right now, where are all the non-NASCAR drivers? Right now, Helio Castroneves is the only confirmed non-NASCAR driver to be racing this year, and he's only doing three races. He's not even doing the full schedule. The SRX clearly tailored their schedule this season to shadow the NASCAR Cup Series schedule. Thursday nights make travel between the Cup race and the SRX race a lot easier. That tells me exactly where their priorities are. As a NASCAR fan who wants to see the sport grow, I'm thrilled that a, a rival non-NASCAR network is going to be giving screen time to some active NASCAR Cup Series stars. A rising tide lifts all ships when it comes to motorsports. I genuinely believe that. But I don't want the SRX to just become a smaller, slimmed down version of the NASCAR Cup Series. I just don't think that's a strong enough identity. If they want to be the new IROC, which Tony Stewart has talked about in the past, then the next few announcements need to be non-NASCAR drivers. Marco Andretti has to come back, right? He's the defending champion. Ernie Francis Jr., Paul Tracy, Tony Kanaan maybe, maybe even bring in someone like uh, Travis Pastrana. Bring Joseph Newgarden back. It was cool to see him race in Nashville last year. You gotta diversify the entry list. Look, I'd love to see this series truly become the new IROC, especially considering ESPN is bringing back Thursday Night Thunder, giving them their own night of the week. That's great publicity for American motorsports. But if the SRX just becomes NASCAR light, just starts to look like the Bush series did in the 2000s, which was basically just a slimmed down version of the Cup Series, but on Saturday, then... I'm afraid the SRX will lose its identity. Bigger names like Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski will likely lead to bigger ratings, but the SRX does need a clear identity or else I, I think it risks losing its luster. Great that these big name drivers are gonna go race at you know, local short tracks in front of a local audience for a cheaper ticket. That's fantastic. It's a different night of the week that does not conflict with any current NASCAR programming. All good and great stuff, but we saw a dip from year one to year two of the SRX. They're pivoting on their plan their identity a little bit. Will it be for the better? Will it eventually lose its luster? I'm just a little concerned. I want to see other names too. I don't want to just see Harvick and Hamlin and Kyle Busch because I can see that on Sunday. It'll be fun for a while, but I don't think that's a strong enough identity to last. Hopefully they're able to continue to bring in some big name indie car drivers, racers from other disciplines. I like seeing recently retired drivers like Michael Waltrip or Matt Kenseth compete. We'll see if any of those names come back. I guess you'll always have Tony Stewart, Boyer, Labonte, Newman still on the entry list. I bought a ticket to the race at Berlin, so I'll be there this summer. Uh, I'm excited. It's going to be a great time. I just hope the SRX can continue to be a special thing. I love what the SRX has done the last couple of years. It's filled a gap on the motorsports calendar. I hope they can continue to build and expand on that uh, for years to come. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of just thinking out loud in this episode. Let me know how excited are you to see Keselowski running full time? He's got to be the championship favorite, right? He's an active NASCAR driver, a former championship driver. As a matter of fact, I imagine he's got to be one of the favorites now right? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. I greatly appreciate the support. And if you're new to the channel and you love NASCAR, hit that subscribe button down below. And thank you as always to my remarkable and very generous Patreon supporters. I will see you all again very, very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and I will see you tonight on the Icebergs channel, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there.